Hey there. Hi guys. It is me, the Cello Guru, going live here. Um, let's see. It looks like I'm live. There I am. All right. This is the first week of Celtic Cello Month. Yay! We're going to do some Celtic Cello tunes. I've been seeing some really good results with my adult students when I throw them in the chord chart spot. So we're going to do that in a minute. We're going to work on dawning of the day. Does anyone have dawning of the day? If you don't have it, go get it out. And we're going to talk about dawning of the day this week. We're going to do a different one next week, a different one the next week. Um, some of these tunes we do more than once. That's because everybody's figuring out what's going on with them. And we can always play them and learn new stuff about them, right? Just want to make sure everybody has a basic knowledge of what's going on with dawning of the day. Hey, everyone, right in there, who's here, because I can't see, and where, you're, where you live, where you are right now. And we're going to talk about dawning of the day, okay? I wanted to tell you that I'm going to have a... a I'm going to have a class on Monday, August 8th, 2 p.m. PDT. It's going to be something about getting rid of your classical perfectionism to find a different part of your brain. That's what I'm on about for the last month or so um, because I'm finding some great results in people, really different than, I mean, I knew that people would be interested in chord chart reading, especially those that don't have any um experience in chord chart reading or maybe they don't even know what it is um somebody last week was like i had no idea that i had knowledge in this area like i just thought that the composers of music were the only people who had anything to do with writing music i didn't i had no idea i could figure stuff out and make up my own parts with this chord chart someone said that to me last week People have been saying stuff like this. They're really engaging in a different part. Hello. I will not try to pronounce your name. Analuapo Oladele, right? Hi, how are you? Hi, Adrian. Analuapo, I said I wouldn't try. Uh, it's nice to see you. Adrian's in marvelous Minnesota, and I don't know what, where, my other cellist is from right in the comments where you're from i'm gonna get my cello and we're gonna work a little bit on dawning of the day make sure everybody who wants to can start to get a reading what yes what <laughs> yes what Anualawapo. yes what <laughs> don't make me pronounce your name again because I can't hear you pronouncing it. You guys have the music? We're going to talk about dawning of the day. Oh, yeah. So I just wanted to remind you, Monday, August 8th, 2 p.m., I'm going to put a link in here for you guys to sign up. It's going to be a Zoom class, okay? Be uh, an hour-long class or something like that. And we're going to make sure everybody's getting out of the perfectionist mindset that we learn as classical cellists, getting out of that and prioritizing creativity equally, equal to perfection. When we, when we prioritize perfection, we get stuck. Why? Because we're not perfect. Classical music, we're always taught to be perfect. Try to be perfect, try to be perfect. Therefore, you're never happy because you're never perfect, right? This other side of our brain, we're going to be prioritizing creativity finding your own voice, figuring out what you want to put in the music. Ha Hello, oh, from Nigeria, yeah, yeah, nice to see you. Um, that's a long ways away. Uh, we're gonna be figuring out how to read the chord chart, what you want to be pu putting into it. You're gonna meet yourself where you are, so if you think you can't do it, throw that idea out right now. Now, if you're in Suzuki Book 2-ish, then you already have some good techniques and you might have more knowledge than that from 
past music, music that you've done or something like that. Everybody comes to the table with a different amount of knowledge. Um, if you're very, very beginner, you might want to wait a little while on this until you get a little bit of knowledge. Maybe Suzuki Book 2 in general, that's my suggestion, but everybody is welcome, anyone is welcome, of course, to try some of this stuff. Okay, Dawning of the Day is an Irish song that's a beautiful song. When we look at the music, I have posted the music on here, so if you don't have it, stop right now. Go print the music out, put it on your stand, come back and start the video, okay? Because then you'll be able to play along. Okay, so the music. What key is this music in? Somebody write in the comments. So you have to look and see certain uh, clues, right? What are the clues? Well, the first thing is who's buried in Grant's tomb? If you look at the music, it says D, right in the middle of the two um, bass clefs, right? It says D. That means D chord. That means we're in the key of D. The first chord's almost always the one chord, the key that you're in, key of D major, okay? Now, you've got G and you've got A. You see those alphabets, notes, D major, right, right, right. You see the notes, D, G, D, A, D, G, D, A, okay. This is not a coincidence. This is a trend. We call the D chord the one chord in the key of D major because it's built on the first note of the scale. D, E, F, G, a G chord is a four chord and A is a five chord. So it's always gonna be one, four, and five, pretty much D, G, A. Let's look at our chord chart and see. Oh yeah. It looks like those are the chords that are in there. You see them, they're in different spots, but really you just see D, G, A, which are one, four, five, pretty much, okay? So those are the chords, and we're going to play the bass lines right now from those um, chords when we're playing our first time through. First of all, let's play the um, melody, okay? So we got four, four, we got a pickup. We got two sharps, F sharp and C sharp, right? Those are things that if you don't know what they mean, you got to figure them out. You don't need me for that. There's a million, thousand, trillion classical teachers that can tell you um, what a D chord mean, what's a, what does a G chord mean, what does an A chord mean, what does two sharps mean, all those kinds of things. But what I'm getting you to do is start to figure out stuff on your own so that you can start putting parts in and making up your own part that goes along with this chord chart. So if a guitarist comes and plays the chords, you can play the main melody that's written down and then you can go off the music and just read the chords and play something from that. So today we're going to do the melody and we'll do bass line, okay? You ready? Dawning of the day. I'm gonna give you three. We're gonna come in on four, okay? One, two, Well, for me, I'm going to look at the chords, see what notes I can add that are from the chords, the written chords like D, G, or A, right? So each chord uses one, three, five. 
So the D chord is D F sharp A. Because that's the root. One, two, three, the third note. The fifth note, right? One, two, three, four, five. So you use the first, the third, and the fifth for an arpeggio. Now, if you've never done this before, just read the root note, which is a D at the beginning, and then it changes to G, and then it changes to A. But your challenge is to look at that chord chart and change on the beat where it's written that the chords change. You're not reading the notes on the top uh, staff, and you're not reading the notes on the bottom staff. But we're going to do that in a minute. Right now, what I'm going to do is add a few harmony notes to the melody. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at what the chords are, D, G, A, wherever they hit, I'm going to try to add notes from that chord that harmonizes with the melody. All right? So this is what that's going to sound like. One, two, three. That's my D chord. Because I know D, A, F sharp. D, F sharp, A is an arpeggio. So that's a D chord, OK? One. some of that. I know you've done some of that in your playing. Um, once you learn the chord for that arpeggio, for that chord, once you learn how to play it on the cello, you'll always know it. Whenever it says D in any piece, you'll be able to go, you go like, oh, it's a D chord. And then your problem is playing it in tune. And then when it's out of tune, you just smile anyway and pretend like it was in tune. It's not so easy to get three notes and tune on the cello, right? That's pretty good. So that's your D chord, 110. Let's take these out and go over the chords, okay? 110 is D. Everybody play your D chord. Ready? Go. Good. The next chord in here is a G chord. So we're going to use the beginning of the Bach prelude. Adrian says she's getting closer. Yeah, Adrian, this is just, this is just, this is, this is messy, you know, improvisation is messy. It's the opposite of classical perfectionism. This is messy. We're gonna fall off, we're gonna hit clams all over the place. That's part of the fun of riding on this roller coaster, okay? So, the G chord can be G, D, B, because it's G, B, D, right? G, A, B, C, D, the root, the third and the fifth, G, B, D, okay? It can be however it fits on the cello. That's another tricky thing that we have because we have to deal with the instrument that we play, right? It's not just music theory. It's music theory as it relates to the cello. How can we do a G chord, for example, on the cello? Well, Bach figured it out. <laughs> the first Bach prelude, right? If you know the Alamond, or maybe the Cerebon from the first Bach sweep, there's a C chord. You guys, once you start doing chords with chord sheets, you're going to be able to keep doing them and get better and better and better and better at them. Whenever you print a 
uh, piece out that you want to play, make sure it has chords written on it, the alphabet letters on top of the music. Because you can read the melody with the music, but you need those alphabet letters on top to get your chord, your harmony from, okay? So now, that was a G chord. Can everybody play that? Open, open, one. So the first chord again, the D chord. Right? The G chord, open, open, one. chord, G chord, and A chord. And then the next thing we're going to do here is put a bass line in, okay? So if you have your chord sheet, you're going to see the first bar, there's a pickup, and then it says D, right? The letter D. So we're going to do the bass note. We're in 4-4, four, four, so we're going to play four Ds, okay? For the first bar, four beats in the first bar. the first bar, okay? The melody will go over that. Okay, so you can record the melody on your phone or something and then play this bass line along with it live, okay? Or you can record the bass line and play your melody with it live. It's super fun. Um, so you're going to do four Ds, then look at the second bar. You're going to do two Ds because it repeats until it changes, okay? third beat you're going to change to a G. So dawning of the day bass line, very basic form, is going to sound like this. Ready? Go. Second bar. Third bar, what do you got? You got a D and you got an A. So just two Ds and two As because that's four beats, right? It's very messy. Again, you can see that the A, you're not really sure what beat the A is on. That's okay. Just make it up. I'm going to do two plus two. Two Ds and two As. And four Ds. Okay, you see? You're getting it? You're getting it? This should be using a different part of your brain than the classical perfectionist. And if you've never done this before, you're like, wait, what? Wait, what's going on? That's good. That's where you want to be. We're in a different part of the brain. We're not thinking perfection. We're thinking, how do I read a chord chart? People are going to ask me, wait, which D do I play? Exactly. That's what I want to ask you. Which D do you want to play? Right? You played the cello because you're creative. You want to do something beautiful and lovely that's creative. Here you are. Here's your chance. Which D are you going to play? It says D. I don't know if I'm writing it backwards for you guys. Which D? Adrian, which D are you going to play in the first bar? Where it says letter A, that's not your chord. That's just letter A. That's a marker to tell us where we are in the piece. The D is your note. It's in between the staffs. Adrian, are you going to do the D, this one, the low one? Or are you going to do the open one? Are you going to do this one? If you pick one of those Ds, do you think that the alphabet police are going to come and put you in jail because you played a D and they wanted you to do a different octave? No. This is your study. Adrian's doing the A string. Oh, you're doing the high one. All right. So that'll be more with melody, Adrian. No, I don't mean the bass line. Oh, uh, I don't know what the question is. Um, but... Um, the bass line is what? No, not cello two. We're not playing a part that's written. We're playing a part from our brain, from the alphabet. Do you see where, where the letter D is written? That means play a D. 
not the note be on the staff. We're not looking at the staffs right now. Only when we play the melody. So it says D there, and then there's an the alphabet letter G, letter D, letter A. It's in between the two staffs. That's what we're looking at, okay? So let's try this. Okay, bass line, Adrian, you got your melody, I mean, you got a rhythm made up. You can make up a rhythm. Wherever you are, you know, make it challenging for yourself. So what I mean by this is if you haven't done this before, four D quarter notes is totally fine, right? You're making that up. If you wanted to and that was boring to you and you wanted to get more exciting, that's what the string quartets always do on the pop tunes. That's it. <laughs> but if you want to do a more busy rhythm, you can do eight eighth notes, right? One, two, three, four. Second bar would be. to G on the third beat, right? Okay, so Adrian, you got your rhythm, and you guys make sure you know where D is, where G is, and where A is. Now, if, if this is easy for you, challenge yourself, okay? What does that mean? That means come up with the arpeggio. That's a D arpeggio, right? Four notes, and it's a D arpeggio. Again, if you don't know what a D arpeggio is, that's fine. There's no shame in that. Figure it out. You got an ear. You're creative. Teachers have been telling you what to do for years. You don't need that right now. Right now, you need to use your brain to figure out what a chord is. Okay? Root, third, fifth. Figure it out. Do it slowly. Practice them in this piece. That's why there's only three chords, because we're doing something fairly basic that is very hard for the cellist who has never done this before. Okay, so everybody's in a different spot with this, right? So if you're challenging yourself to play the arpeggio, four beats of a D arpeggio, then two beats of D, then two beats of G, two beats of D, and two beats of A. If you wanted to do eighth notes, choosing both that's why it's magical because it's creative and you're playing a part that's never been done before because you're making it up right now okay so I am going to play the bass line all the way through you can play it with me and then I'm going to play the melody and I want you to play a bass line over the melody that I do okay you guys ready and you guys watching later you got your cello out you got your music up Okay, first of all, the bass line, choose your rhythm that's going to fit into four beats, and you just keep going with each bar, right? Change the notes as the alphabet note is written in between the staffs there. Do not read the bottom staff, and do not read the top staff. That's not what we're doing right now. We're making this up. Okay, you ready? We're reading the alphabet notes. One, two, three, four.
Anu. Anu, good. You were able to do it. Adrian, how'd you do? Did you do okay? Did you make up a rhythm? Did you challenge yourself, right? Because being bored doesn't help any of us. You're bored and then you're not progressing forward, right? So you wanna make it a little bit challenging for yourself. So if I were gonna challenge myself with arpeggios, I might be... So now I'm going to play the melody and I want you guys to play a bass line and have fun with it. Allow yourself to wipe out because you will. When you're trying new things, you're going to wipe out left and right and then you jump right back on the train, okay? You guys ready? Everybody who's watching this later, I want you to write in the comments and let me know how you did after you try this, okay? This is so fun. This is using a different part of our brain. This is going to break you out of being stuck in the pursuit for perfection that we, as classical musicians, we, we get stuck in a lot, right? So let's try it. You guys ready? You're gonna do the bass line. Which D are you gonna choose? I don't know. You tell, you tell me. You do it. You figure it out. You are the creator of your part. Okay, you ready? Okay. And I'm gonna put the chords in with mine so it's really pretty. You make your bass line how you want it to sound against mine. One, two, We try, try stuff and we wipe out, but then I got better. Um, Adrienne's got her thumb up, which means she's able to do it. Okay, the harder you make your part, the more challenged you are. Don't make it too hard or you won't continue to do it. This is going to use a different side of your brain. So I just wanted to tell you what we learned today. We learned that the key of D has two sharps, C sharp and F sharp, right? We learned that there is a one chord and a four chord and a five chord in most songs. In the key of D, it's going to be D, E, F, G, A, right? One, four, five, right? We learned um, that um, you're going to follow along with the melody and make up your bass part. You learn that you get freedom when you see a chord chart, right? You can play whatever rhythm you want that fits into to a 4-4 four, four bar. You can play whatever octave note you want, or you can take any of the notes from the arpeggio that goes in that chord. The key of D, the notes are D, F sharp, A. It sounds like this. Or, and then it just continues. sharp A, D, F sharp A, okay? The, the chord of G is G, B, D. Remember one, three, five. G, A, B, C, D. One, three, five. G, B, D. G, B, D, G, B, D. It just keeps going up, okay? 
you can start at the top and come down. You can start at the bottom and go up. Do it however you want to. And then the third chord in this key is A, C sharp, E. Okay? Those are the arpe arpeggios I want you to learn if you're at that level, okay? And wherever you are is fine. One more hint. When you're doing something like a D chord, you can just bar it. And that will give you the root and the fifth. And both of those notes are good in a D chord. Root, third, fifth. Remember, that just leaves a third out. So it's easy because it's barred. If it's an open string, like a G string, right across the string because those are fifths, right? Okay. All right, guys. Let me know how you did today right in the comments. And I want you guys to watch this and I want you guys to start thinking from a different side of your brain so that you have something else to practice other than your classical pieces and print them up right from Cello Nation, okay? This month we're going to go over three of them, at least maybe four. And I want you guys to start working on them and start finding your own voice that is not written down after you learn the melody, okay? All right, over and out from Cello Guru Central. It's been nice chatting with you guys. I want to remind you that Monday at 2 p.m., I'm going to be doing a class, and I'm going to advertise for it on Cello Nation. Adrian says, this is so much fun. Adrian, you know, I'm tired because I just had a class before this, and so I'm like, I'm so glad you're having fun because I'm a little tired, so I was hoping I wasn't acting too draggy. But I love this stuff. I think it's great. I love it so much. I'm going to be harping about it. Monday, 2 p.m. PDT. I forget the name of the class. Something about getting rid of your classical perfectionism or let's step into a new place away from classical perfectionism to make you a better cellist. That's the idea behind it, okay? I'm going to post for it in here, and I want you to sign up for it. And I'm going to send out an email to my subscriber list, and I want you guys to sign up for it, okay? Hi, Susan. I didn't know you were here lurking. Sign up for the class on Monday, okay, guys? And uh, look for the look for it. All right? I will advertise it. I'll see you guys later. Thank you. Over and out from Cello Guru Central in the key of D major. <laughs>